nobody is. So God. Well, we have a few minutes left. I thought maybe we'd open it up for questions and see if folks have anything to ask. Yeah. Hey, when your uh, father gives you the saxophone and you're 14 years old, but you didn't know, I mean, you weren't, you weren't getting lessons, right? You were, what did you do? Just, did you, you know right away that you I were, was getting you lessons okay. every summer when I go back to Philadelphia, but I was going to school in Wilmington. See, my father ran in some hard times. And uh, my grandfather and grandmother were middle class. They had, to, they had the grocery store in Wilmington that sold to all the black teachers at the schools. And they would, you know, on credit and pay them. You know, so when I went to Wilmington, I was better off than in Philadelphia at that time. But I, when I go back to Philly in the summer, I take lessons and then I go back to Wilmington and they had a band and I was in the marching band for all of the colleges we were playing on Wisconsin and <laughs> Notre Dame themes and all and all the colleges I couldn't afford to go to. We were dun 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 <laughs> So I did take saxophone lessons. Yes, private, not in a college or school. Anybody else have questions? Yeah, way in the back. What, what kind of stuff was uh, available to students then? What kind of <clears throat> uh, things were available to students that as far as methods or A2 books? Or... There were books. Uh, Ted Nash book on all the autism notes and all that training I had, uh, you know. And we used to go to the Philadelphia Library together and listen to Stravinsky and all that kind of stuff. You know, you can find, uh, uh, you can get an education without going to college. Uh, it was a lot of mentoring going on during those days too. If someone knew something and you uh, liked what they did, they would show it, show you. Oh man, what is that you played then? Oh, here it is, that's so-and-so. So -so. Okay. So Coltrane didn't go to no uh, university either. And Dizzy or Charlie Parker, they didn't go to no music school. <coughs> Earl Garner, you know, they're not the only ones. Irving Berlin, you know. Some people like just music is built right in. Yeah, over here. So how many bands were you in uh, for other people before you sort of created your own uh, your own group? Oh, I was in, uh, the, the best big band was Dizzy. I stayed in his band. And I played a couple gigs with Gil Evans, and, you know, at the Apollo Theater and other, and Nat told that other band. And then I was with a small group with a trumpeter from the West Coast who was the bebop uh, Howard McGee. Howard McGee took me to Paris in 19, May of 48. We went on a tour that, the headliner of that tour was the Grand Coleman Hawkins. And Errol Garner was with the trio with John Collins on guitar and uh, Slam Stewart on the bass. And uh, they took the French by storm, Errol Garner. And Earl Garner could not read a note of music biggest that wooden <laughs> petition. You see what I'm saying? But Earl Garner had number one, Misty was a super hit. You know? So he got his music from, you know, music is in the air. And everybody can grab some. You don't have to be, go to school for them to tell you. There's a lot of people making uh, great livings on music that don't know anything about the written music. You know? If you know, say, oh, all my exes live in Texas. That's why I moved to Tennessee. <laughs> and they get rich. <laughs> so, Nobody, he didn't go to school. <laughs> he, he got divorces. 
Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, right here. Were you here at uh, when Nizzy came to Iowa City back in, I think, the late 80s? On the hand 80s? No. Answer stage? No. Not in the 80s. I think uh, I played here with my brothers at a college, as I can remember, because when we were at uh, Columbia CBS Records, we were doing a lot of touring around, and we came to. I, I, you know, uh, Iowa, I, I played probably more in Iowa when I was with that dance band in the 40s, but not with Dizzy. Because I, I was with Dizzy uh, in 49 and 50. And then uh, Dizzy loved me because he saw my life change. You know? And uh, he could start calling me, oh, this is a little professor. <laughs> when, I, when I started teaching at Queens College, you know, which was a, a blessing because, you know, uh, I had two friends there who knew of, of my life in music, and I didn't have a degree, a bachelor's degree or nothing. I had a degree from the University of the Streets. <laughs> and uh, my two Jewish friends at Queens College, the symphony conductor, Maurice Perez, and Dr. Biba, we call him, Howard Brofsky, who is a trumpet player, they knew of my uh, what I had done for over the years, so accumulated uh, knowledge. So I got that gig and I stayed there. And incidentally, the pianist that's playing with me tonight, Jeb, I call him the General, Jeb the General Patton, is super musician. He studied with myself and Sir Roland Hanna at Queens College. In, New York, and he's been playing with the Heat Brothers uh, about 13 15 years. years or something. 15, I think. 15. <laughs> you know, give or take. <laughs> when you get to be 85, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, during, during the 40s, when you were touring in Iowa, we still had problems with race at that time. Where did you stay? I know when Duke Ellington would come through mm -hmm. Iowa, there was a black family that mm -hmm. he stayed with. Yeah. Where, where did you stay? Well, that was the case. We would stay with uh, our people. They had uh, rooming houses and places we stayed. <laughs> you know, and uh, we were still victims of name calling and all that kind of stuff. But here, I think we played, I, it's my recollection that in Des Moines, we played like two or three different nights. Play one night for the black audience and one night for white audience. Dance music with Nat Toes. We did that in a lot of the cities where the race problem was still uh, so prevalent. Would you play one night, if you're playing for a black audience, would you change your, no. your music? No, we're playing dance music, man. Okay, <laughs> but, but, so the whites like the same kind of music? No, it's a swing and, Era, man. I, I didn't know. Yo, Glenn Miller. I, I, I went to the Earl Theater in Philadelphia, and I fell in love with Glenn Miller's did band you know, as a kid. Did you know Glenn studied with Schillinger? No. Yes, and did Tommy Dorsey? Yeah, I know. I saw. I saw Tommy Dorsey's band. I'll never smile again. <laughs> when, when, when Sinatra was there in the Earl Theater, you know, I could go to the Earl Theater in Philadelphia. It wasn't no problem with that. I saw Benny Carter's band there. I saw, you know, and, and the big band was in vogue. That was what was happening. People danced to big band. And then when the big band era stopped and everybody's standing up on the stage with a quintet playing this weird music, now people dance to hip hop. And everybody's. And they can't even dance. <laughs> I think you've got a second career, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> They're just posing. I mean, you know, all the people could dance to swing music. Yes. Did you know Glenn was from Iowa? No. From Clarinda, Iowa. He was born here. Let me, hey, look, I just know 
uh, Brother uh, Pine, I, I mean, I just knew when I, Brother Pine, when I saw Glenn Miller at the Earl Theater as a kid, and they put the blue lights on the saxophone section, and they start playing serenade in blue. I went nuts. I told her, I said, oh my God, I want to be up there. One of these days, I'm going to be up there like they are. I got, I got that record home. CDs, Tommy Dorsey. Ben Miller and Artie. Just one more Artie thing. Shaw. Glenn said that had when he would get done with World War II. We'll sneak preview of what we're going to hear tonight. Oh, well, <clears throat> whenever we perform, uh, we play jazz standards and also the American Songbook. Yes. <laughs> we play something that people. <laughs> well, I don't have to be 85. But there's something that they heard, a song that they heard, you know, a uh, standard. I mean, you know, as a, a musician being here this long, I analyze, I'm very analytical, so I've analyzed compositions from Cole Porter and from Jerome Kern and from Gershwin and people like that. So, I mean, I like that music, man. They grew great music and you can it's a part of my life so i can't forget that and play all the originals because people never heard my originals they say okay what is that he i never heard that what is that george gershwin was one of shonder's students too <laughs> yeah i know that but i just heard one that i had never heard the other yeah, night yeah. uh michael tilson thomas played it you say yeah michael tilson thomas Thompson. Thomas, Thomas was yeah. playing it on the piano and he recorded it and I looked on my computer, 85 or 86 or something like that. The music of Gershwin and he, the symphony orchestra and he's playing a piano. One called Walking the Dog or something. Oh yes, yes, I know that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's from a movie. Walking My Dog. It, it's uh, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Yeah, yeah, well, that one, but the other one I like is uh, about, uh, Sleep, sleepless night. That's on that record. Oh, okay. Sleepless night by Gershwin. Okay. And it just, you know, it just floored me, man. It's so modern. It's that, so beautiful. That wasn't his string quartet, was it? No. Okay. He plays it on the piano. Okay. It's four minutes and twenty-eight seconds. <laughs> <laughs> So when you were playing with the big bands and the big bands at the time, was the music all notated or did people do it, were doing it from memory? No, it was notated. I think I wasn't back there that far. Now, come on. Because <laughs> all the bands, you know, they read the music now. You know. I have a big band and I play, uh, uh, I'm playing my birthday in October, and Mr. Cosby always comes when opening night hang with me. And that helps me, you know. He's a jazz lover. Yes. All right, well, I think we're going to, let's correct that something else. I was just gonna say that they'll be playing on stage on the Pentecrest, of course, at uh, six o'clock tonight. Yeah. The Heath Brothers, uh, Jimmy, his brother, Albert, on uh, drums and Jeff Patton on piano is David Wong. With David Wong. Wonderful, wonderful group. And Lisa and the KCCK table will have copies of the book for sale. And I sh think she probably has copies right now for sale. I do. Indeed. I do. Yeah. So uh, we have Jimmy Heath here talking about his memoir, I Walked with Giants, uh, truly one of the giants of jazz himself. Uh, let's give him a big round of applause. Yeah.